And we want to thank him for every day, every minute, every hour, every month, every year, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand with me as we pledge allegiance to our flag. Thank you. We got our mics doing well, don't we? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> board of Adjustments is a, a nine-member board. We're appointed by the city council, and we serve on a voluntary basis without compensation. Our procedure for conducting business is that I will call the petitioner up. Please come to the mic. Please speak directly into the mic and clearly. Be sure to give your name and address before you make your presentation. Uh, at that time, members of the board will ask you questions about your item, and anyone here that has any questions or any uh, uh, concerns about a particular item will be given the opportunity to come forward and speak or ask questions. Once we receive public testimony and discussion on a particular item, the members of the board will deliberate, and we will render our decision. I remind members with a personal or a financial interest in any request, you're required to recuse yourself from voting. Any testimony that is submitted by the petitioner or on behalf of the petitioner during the presentation of a, an agenda item will be binding as to the decision the board makes relative to the motion. I remind the members of the board tonight, if you make a motion to deny an item, you must give a reason. This time I'll introduce the members that are here tonight, Ms. K.T. Browns, our vice chairman, Mr. Steve Hughes, Mr. Nathan Williams, Mr. Bo Holmes, Mr. Corey Johnson, Mr. Mark Prince, Mr. Pickett Reese, Mr. George Howell. I'm John Stanley, your chairman. And our staff that's here tonight is uh, Ms. Tanya Ingram, our recording secretary, and Ms. Jovan Hines. We have nine people here tonight. That's a full house. It takes five votes to approve a motion. Any questions? Okay. We will start the meeting. We have nine items on the agenda tonight. The first item is uh, presented by Terry Robinson, requesting a streets side yard variance, a coverage variance, and a rear yard and side yard variances for an, an addition to an accessory structure located at 501 Federal Drive and R60S zoning district. Mr. Robinson. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Terry Robinson, 501 Federal Drive. Um, I'd like to build a carport attached to uh, an existing garage. Okay, you've got your existing structure that's within two feet of the rear and side property lines. Yes, sir. Okay, now that's existing. So apparently you didn't get an approval on that at the time. Well, my the house was uh, built in 1939. I have no reason to believe that the accessory structure was not built at the same time. I believe it was. Okay. And well, I think gonna, all that predated any of yeah. these ordinances. Well, we're going we're gonna to deal with that then. And so you've got this additional structure, an accessory structure, 380 square, excuse me, 400. 80 square feet. Uh, what are you going? What are you planning to do with the additional structure? It's just a, essentially a roof, a carport, just to keep my truck and my Tahoe in it and trash cans. So it's just a roof. There's no sides. Yes, sir. No sides. No sides at all. So it's going to be used as a carport. Correct. Okay. All right. So you're real close to your adjacent property owners. Yes, sir. What are you doing about keeping the water from these two structures off of your neighbor? Well, if you'll roll back down to that photograph there, it's, it's not clear from there, but about where that red line is, at least uh, about a foot over on his property line, is a foot tall retaining wall, concrete retaining wall, that holds back his driveway. So, and there's an inlet on my side of that. So there's no water that runs from my property over into his. Because of a retaining wall? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you talked to your neighbor about this? Has I have. he got any concerns about water? No, sir. He, he's fully supportive. He uh, says it provides shade for his vehicles. 
Okay? Well, we always ask that question because that's mighty close. Surely you're going to have an overhang. Um, but you've got two foot clear between the, the roof and the roof line and the uh, property line. Correct. Right? Okay. Um, board members, any questions about this item? I'll see yes. if anybody has an objection or concern. Uh, Mr. Yes. Powell? Um, you have a double garage. I'm sorry? Do you have a double garage? Is that what you got? Yes, sir. It, it, the existing garage is double, although it's, it's essentially closed in with a single garage door. Okay. But it, all right. And this is going to be like a double carport. Correct. Okay. And that, that's a concrete driveway? Yes, sir. It's a double and, dr a concrete driveway leading up, of going from the street to the garage. To the garage now. Okay. Yes, sir. It's all hardened in. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Any that's other all. questions? Could, couldn't we just include in that motion, since you asked that question, that he protects the neighbor by uh, whatever is necessary to keep the water from drifting on their house? Sure. Okay. Well, he, yeah, you've agreed that you'll keep your water off of your neighbor. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Good point. <clears throat> is there anyone in the office that would care to address this item? Entertain a motion. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion. I move that the request of 15 feet street side yard variance, 500 square foot coverage variance, three foot real yard variance, and a three foot side yard variance with the understanding that the water is to be kept off the neighbor be approved. Second. We have a motion to have a second. Second. Mr. Second. Williams, you second that. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Item number two is presented by Michael Gardner, requesting a rear yard variance and a street side yard variance for a new dwelling to be located at 2733 5th Street in an R60D zoning district. Mr. Gardner? Yes, uh, Michael Gardner, uh, 2733 5th Street, Greater Washington Park. You're going to need to speak a little clearer and louder into that mic, if you will, please, uh, sir. Michael Gardner, 2733 5th Street, Greater Washington Park. Uh, I'm petitioning that uh, the land variance for new dwelling. Uh, I've got several properties down there I, I purchased, but when I purchased this property, uh, I didn't realize that uh, when they did discrete construction down there, that they had taken eight feet of the property already, so I'm having to petition that eight that they've already taken. But the real dwelling, um, I'm requesting 10 more feet, and I'm gonna have to go back to my architect because of they've already um, taken that front from me. I mean, the side two lane from me right there, that two lane. Okay. Well, uh, I'm gonna address the same issues with you as I did with the gentleman before you. You gotta keep your water on your property. Yes, sir. You cannot spill your water on the adjacent property. Owner. Yes, sir. Okay? So you've got to make arrangements for that. Yes, sir. Either by gutters or underground storm pipe. Uh, but 10 feet, you know. Right. Is the slope of the land, is it relatively flat there? No. Uh, when uh, where, they, you, where are you planning to take the water? Are you going to take it back to the street? You're on a corner there. I'm on the corner. It's already... Um, the land has already been elevated because when they came through there with construction, they've already dug down into for the uh, the the the, uh, the street itself. They've already dug. The land is already elevated. They taken the, some of the front off every property down there when they did. Uh, I guess back in the 70s or 80s, uh, the land is already elevated. Well, for, for the water, drainage. The question is: Is the water going to drain to Two Lane Avenue or Fifth Street? Uh, there's a drainage uh, right in front of the property on 5th Street. There's a drainage there. And there's a drainage um, across the street. There's another drainage, which is on yeah, the side. Yeah, I understand there's drains in the street, but you've got to grade your property so yeah, that yes, the water sir. drains away from yes, your sir. neighbors. That's I'm going to have to elevate it a little that's bit That's my point. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to ask those questions. Yes, sir. You know. Okay? Yep. Any questions? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm... Is there a house next door to that property that I looked at? Oh, they, they've torn all that down. Uh, that's what I thought. I, I, that's why I don't know what y'all are talking about. Well, they talk, they've, they've torn that whole block okay. down. Right. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, anyone in the audience that would care to address this item? 
Mr. Holmes. I don't entertain a motion. I'll Make a motion as to approve as requested. I have a motion for Mr. Holmes to have a second. I can't hear you. Yeah. Approve as requested. Okay. Right. Okay. Second. I have a second from Mr. Brown. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good luck on that. Thank you. Item three is presented by Elite and Company. Requesting a special exception for a place of amusement and assembly mm -hmm. to be located at 15 West South Boulevard in the B4 zoning district. Marcus McQueen, 15 South Mark Boulevard. Mark McLean. Marcus McQueen. Mark, Martin McQueen. Marcus okay. McQueen. Marcus. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. All right. Mr. McQueen, you have a request here. Yes. Tell us what you want to do, and then we'll ask, ask you some questions. Okay. I want to operate a bar and grill, and um, actually the time frame, I wanted to kind of get a little lenient on the time frame, because uh, I think your necessary bars close at about 11 o'clock or so, but on Friday and Saturday, I wanted to extend the hours to like 2 o'clock. Okay. You want to operate a bar and an, and a, and a, an amusement center, correct? Right. Okay. And your, your, your hours you want to operate Monday through, what, Friday oh, in the mornings? No. Um, daily. daily. Monday daily, through Sunday? Daily. Daily I'm going to do the 7 to 12. I'm doing seven, breakfast. That's daily. Yes, Monday that's, through that's, Sunday? Yes. That's breakfast, yes. That's seven days a week? Yes. Yeah, seven, actually, it will be open seven days a week, right. Okay. Now, on Monday to, like, Friday, we're going to do 7 to 12. That's breakfast. And from 7 to 11, doing out the day, I have to figure out which, you know, how it kind of goes, what days I do, like the happy wait, hour. Wait a second. Hold on. Let me, I want to make sure everybody understands. When you say daily, that's Monday through Sunday, right? Right. From 7 a.m. to noon. That's breakfast. I understand. Uh -huh. And then Sunday through Thursday, you want to operate from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Right. Is that correct? Right. And then Friday and Saturday, you want to op uh, open at 7 p.m. and close at 2 a.m. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, are you going to have any outdoor assembly? Is everything going to be inside? Correct. No, all bands, parties, amusement, everything's inside? Everything's inside. Nothing's outside? Nothing outside. Tell us about your lighting. Have you got, are you going to have good lighting? Yes, our, the, the lighting actually is a distressed property behind it. I'm working with the owner to, I'm going to clean and take care of the property over to get the street lights, the um, Alabama Power to get the street lights on, which I would pay for. And I'm a, the, my building, how it is, I would have the same lights like the convenience stores, the extra bright LEDs shining out to the parking lot, have a patrol car be in the parking lot, so parking lot would be secure. How large is this building? Um, 5,444 feet, square feet. Where's everybody going to park? There's not a lot of parking with the, that building. We're going to, uh, that's why I said, working with the owner of the distressed building behind that I can use the parking lot, the parking area. But you don't have that confirmed yet, right? Yes. I mean, I, 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 I clean and take care of, take care, take care of it now. So yes, we parked there. Actually, I did, just did like a repair for a small so, church. So you're saying your parking will be on the lot uh, west of you or on the lot east of you where that looks like the, a, what is no, that on the what's that building to the east of you all right to my to my right it's the gas station and i, I wouldn't that's have what them, it looks like yeah that, i wouldn't have them park with parking over there they'll be parking in the vacant open spot to my left so your parking is going to be where to the west of you yes i guess yes the west yes okay because this building stand alone by itself. Yeah, I mean I couldn't. Does know. not give you parking enough. I understand. You know? But I not I can't know which way from your way. That's why I said my left. If you on my side is my left. Oh, yeah. hey, do you own this lot next door to you there? No, I own I own the lot uh, that's circled in red. The lot next door is the one I'm taking care of and working with the owner, keeping the you know, keeping it front and phase, looking good, he let me use the parking. Well, you own, do you, are you saying you own the building that you yes. want to get the variance? From? Right. Correct? Yes. Well, you've got, you, you know, right now you don't have any assurance that, that you, 
Except maybe some verbal assurance that you can use that lot. I mean, it wouldn't be nothing to get in writing that I can use the lot at all. It, it wouldn't be nothing at all. To get, no. if I need, if that's what I needed, I just, I didn't know that well, we, I needed. We normally require some kind of written agreement that says you've got access to use that lot for parking. If Otherwise, right. if you don't get that lot, the guy just changes his mind, mm -hmm. okay? Right. Then you got a parking problem. Mm -hmm. Then you're, then you're in that service road. Gotcha. I mean, that, that's no problem. That, that would be a problem at all. Can I ask a question? Yeah, if, Mr. Holmes. If we approve, can we prove, approve on contingent upon him getting an agreement from the landowner agreeing to allow him to park there? You okay with that, Tanya? Mm -hmm. That so they would come in? Provide you with a letter. He would come in with a letter showing he's got the right to park over there? Provide a letter to us before we actually sign a business license, yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you do that, are you okay with that? That's that's fine. Uh, you take it to Ms. Ingram and she'd have it. But if you lose that lease or you don't have access to that, then, you know, you, 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 could, tip, you could lose your variance, okay? Mm hmm So, right, Tanya? Yeah. Because if, what we're trying to do is avoid parking in that service road. And I've seen people use that, those service roads before. Mm -hmm. Okay? Gotcha. All right. We'll come back to that, board. Uh, Y'all got any questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. What is there now at that building? Uh, the building I own? Yeah. Uh, it used to be a um, AKA center where they used to do all their activities and stuff like that at. And right now, like I said, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put my all into making it. So there's larger. nothing going on there now? No, nothing there yeah. now but me just doing construction just and that building was built to be a bank is that right right it used to be an old bank okay I, I'm, I'm getting it straight in my head I know what you're talking about okay but there's nothing there now and you want to open what you want to do okay thank okay. you Is anybody any other questions board members one more question yes sir Mr. And, all of, and what you're speaking about the, the parking is right behind the Right behind the buildings where you where no you, no uh, I, I'm gonna use the side, side. The I'm, side. yeah I'm gonna use the side and that's where my lighting will be at. Service station on one side and nothing is on the other. Correct. Side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it's that vacant lot right there. I got you. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Um, uh, Ms. Brown, you got a question? Have you talked to anybody in the neighborhood? Yes, I talked to the neighborhood. I'm gonna let them use it for their neighborhood association meetings and. Boom, ever like I, like I just said, the past uh, couple weekends it was a small church. They had a funeral, need a repair. Let them use the facility. And they no have charge. no problem with it, ma'am. And they have no problem. No problem whatsoever. Thank they you. want it. They they want the, the the food and you know to do something with it because it's all a discreet property. Ain't nothing going over. And me from the neighborhood trying to do it. So that's pretty much what's now going I'm on. I'm glad to see something being done with it too. All right, that's why hopefully, hopefully it, it works out. So that, I know I got to come here and I just want to do everything the right way and thank you. just do everything the right way. Thank that's you. It. Okay, um, if we approve it now, let me, let me make sure that you agree to some things because it's going to be part of your motion. Of, or, or a, what we're saying here is going to be, you're going to be required to abide by. You okay. have sufficient outside lighting, right? All right. Right, yes. And you're going to acquire the use of whether well, leasing or buying that lot next door to you. Right. Right? Right. And if you lose that lot, you, you stand the chance of losing your variance. I got. I understand. Like if the guy said, because this is this, this, this the problem with the lot behind me. It's distress. It's, it's I understand. Empty. So any if given you don't time, own it, there's hmm? no telling what could happen to that, it. That's that what I was saying. So that, at, at, at that chance, if the guy put it up for sale to whomever or something like that, what would that close my business down and all the money, you know, all the stuff I'm putting in it. So I, I, I couldn't, for right now, he don't got no, nothing to do with it. I'm cleaning it up. I'm picking the bars up. I'm doing everything to do over them. We but it. We got it. Okay. I mean, but for your protection, if he decides to do something with it, you have no parking, you, then you have no business. That's but he saying. has a signed statement uh, allowing him to. No, I, I, I understand. I'm just, I'm just trying to tell him just for right. his protection, if, that guy decides to sell at some point, then he has nothing. 
I think it's I mean, a great idea to make I still out got there. parking, but it's I mean how 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 would you say I still got you know park well, say if, well if, if you've got twenty cars, where are you gonna put them? If you, I mean, if yeah, you my lot can lot. hold twenty cars. It if can you hold lose 20. that lot, where are you putting twenty cars? I mean, it can hold my it, without even parking over there. I can hold twenty cars because if you look and see it, my building, I can I can put twenty. I'm a car salesman. I can line twenty cars up out there in the front. I mean, we're, we're just giving you some advice here, okay? Oh no, I understand it. And but. let's say you sign a three-year lease on this lot, mm -hmm. and at the end of the lease, he sells it to somebody else. I, un I understand you, that you totally. Just, you know, I understand then, it, then but you, I can still you got get. A you may have a problem. That's no, I'm not saying I can still get 50 okay. cars on we my We got lot. it. Um, anyone, any more questions? Anyone that was scared to address this item? Mr. Holmes, can you, you give us a motion? Yeah, I'd uh, hey, like to make a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I got to spread it around. I'd like to make a motion contingent upon. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Williams. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Well, I think the basic question is what we've been saying all the time. If you lose, basically, operate that lot, if somebody else buys it, whatever happened to it, mm -hmm. are you comfortable yeah, with having enough space left to take care of your parking situation? Yes, as I was explaining, the lot, if we could look the edges, I can, I can, I got front parking right up, up top. I don't know if y'all can see it from your computer. I got front and the back, you see all back there, that's parking out as well. So I, I, I can, I can line 40, 40 or 50 cars up without even being out, out the, over there. I just want you to have to close your business down if mm -hmm. you lost that. Okay. You're yes, Brian? I understand. One, one thing, I did look at it, and he does have parking space. He does have parking space. Okay. I went out and looked at, I, I usually look at everything, because I'm nosy. <laughs> Tanya, yes. he said the building's about 5,000 feet. 5,000 square feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. B4 requires what, six and a half spaces per thousand? <laughs> Gotta look. Mm -hmm. That's about 35 parking spaces. <laughs> One and a half per 200 square foot, so yeah. And now six and a quarter mm -hmm. per, per, thousand. per thousand. Yes. Do we know he's got enough parking? Does he need a parking variance anyway? No, because this would have been built according to the zoning, and they would have required that ever how many yes, parking right. spaces are required by zoning when the building was built. Yeah, but it wasn't built as an entertainment center. Yeah, but okay. Well, all right. We're we'll, we'll, we're okay with that. Yes. But. What we need to do is require you to have that lot next door, okay? For Even if he has parking space? I have parking. How many parking have you got on site? I mean, if, I, if, if, if it takes me to go out there and take all my cars from my car lot but, and line but, them up. Time out. Mm -hmm. We're giving, we're, you're, you're here for the use of this property for an exceptional use, which is a place right. of assembly and right. a bar. I can, okay. I can get 50, if, if what you're saying, I can get 50 cars on the lot. I can. And that's enough parking for the place to assume if I have two I people to I don't car. see 30 parking spaces on this lot. Yeah, if you, if, if, from that lot, if you come out there, there, it used to be a bank. So if the bank have a full staff of, of building that magnitude and customers, where do you think they got to park at? They got to park there. They, I mean, I ain't, I ain't being no other kind of way, but I know I have enough room to park. Well, Everybody car in here, there, and it won't be in the if road. If you're going to use this for like a retail use or a bank, it wouldn't be an issue. But, but we're considering the use as a, for a place of an assembly, okay? Right. Which we all know requires additional parking. And okay. how, how many parks? Got it. How many? Well, I'm saying, would I get a, a number of parks so I can be able to go off that? Of you saying a place of assembly or amusement, because there can be a place of assembly or amusement, and we got how many cars probably outside? 30, 35. I can put them in the lot easily without even no, probably no. in the back just on alone. But you did say that you can get that lot next door. I, I, I do, but I don't want it to be what you're saying about the lease situation, because I'm finna put some money into this building. Now, like you say, if the guy is a distressed building, if somebody offer them whatever, and, and, and they sell the building, then like you say, my building can go. Business can be gone, so you don't want to make you don't. Want I don't to want that. To I that. don't want that. Have to be that because I don't want to be up until three years later. He might say, "Hey, Marcus, I, I'm, I'm I'm glad you're keeping it up, but you're finna sell your building. Well, then well, my business gone." Well, then, then we need to know how many parking spaces are on this lot. 
I mean, what I need to, what do I need? Do I need to mark them off? Or I need to put a car in here. You convince me that it's enough. Do, do I need to mark yes, them we off? Yes, we do it all the time. I'm asking what I need to do. Do I need to mark them off? I got a car. I go. I can put all the cars there equally, however many feet there, and mark however many cars I can get in there. I mean, if that's the case. But whatever technical way we need to do it, we can do it, though. John, can I ask a question? Yes. It would seem to me like uh, what, what we're trying to do is actually protect you to yes. require that you get that lot next door to you permission to use it for the entire time that you are going to be open. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing from you is that you don't want that stipulation, that if you lose the ability to use that lot next door, you want to be able to still be in business and park all the cars on your parcel. Right. What we're saying is if that happens and you're, you have too many cars and your customers are trying to park out in West Side the, in the access road and behind you with no permission and it becomes a problem, what we're saying is they're not going to let you continue to operate if it's a problem. If you have a parking problem at that point, they're going to be able to stop you. That, uh, and I'm understanding, but if that happened, let it be that. I don't want that restraint. So if it does, uh, well, some go on and I don't, I have too many cars out in the street. They right, y'all can open and close like you're doing now. Write a ticket and say, hey, we got X amount of cars out here in the street and bring it to the table like that. But I don't want that because I, I don't know. That's like the people sold that building, you know, out of but disgrace. I believe, I believe that we have to condition this approval upon you having the the proper parking for your customers. Is that right, John? In and some I way, do. we, we, we can because we are approving this use. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got it. You know. Okay. This is not a bank. This is not a restaurant. This is a place of amusement. I mean, on a Friday night, how many people you think you're going to have? I mean, be honest with you. What would you, what, what do you a, hope to a, have? On a, on a Friday night, I don't, I, I wouldn't know, but I say maybe 50 people. You know what I'm saying? On a, on a Friday, maybe. I, I, I this my, I, I sell cars, and it's a, this a dream. I'm trying, so. Okay, I, so since it's your dream, but I mean, on a Friday or Saturday. On a Friday night, night, on a busy I, night, you gonna have a band, a DJ? What, what, no, 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 no. On, a, on a Friday night, I will have them just like an open happy hour or uh, something like that. They come in, so I may have 30 people. I may have 10 people. I can't, I can't just dictate it off the high volume because it might not happen. You, you know, it might come in there, I might, 10 people, my business may fail. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't know till it comes. So, right. and I, I wouldn't mind if y'all be out there the first day and if I get may, may I 300 people there, y'all write a ticket and say he can't do it. You Here, know what I'm saying? Here's our concern. If you have 75 people, you have a big event, you have 75 to 100 people, mm -hmm. and you only have enough room to park 30 cars and, and more than half of them come by themselves and mm -hmm. don't ride together, where are these other cars going to go? All right, I, I, like I said, I, we're I, trying to I'm going to park them on, help, I okay? understand it. I, I'm going to park them many as I can on my property, and it should be enough for a hundred people. Roadway, you got to have an in, egress, We, we got an in and out. It ain't, it ain't no, it's an in, it's an in, it's a both, you can go in and out either way it go. You can go out, you can go out, e in, anywhere, ain't nothing blocking nothing in. Ms. Brown. When I go into these different places, I notice on the wall it says how many people you can have in this place. Mm -hmm. You can't have what you want in the place. It tells you how many people can occupy that place. And upon looking at that place, I did see parking, uh, at least uh, enough parking just as I've seen at these other clubs that we have here within the city. And, and I think that would be nice if he signed that paper saying that he can use that parking place of the other property. But if he can't, and something happens that will cause him to have problems with his business, in looking at the business itself, he did have proper parking. You don't but you don't know how much proper parking he has. You don't know I know he can't have. have that We wouldn't many know how many until we, we open it and see I, how many people. I have people. a question, John. Yes. Are you, are you in, is this where your car business is right now? No. Okay. I would like to say, though, that parking cars for a sales place to sell cars is different 
from parking in a parking lot where you're letting customers park their own cars you can't have it as tight as you can have it in a sales area or you'll have these people hitting each other in the parking lot right and that's and I think that what we're saying is I feel like you really do have a limited number of parking spaces here maybe the thing to do is to figure out how many parking places really you have in the most efficient way so that so that you know how many parking spaces that you've got for the for a large event in the instance that you lose the ability to use that lot next door I think you really need to know that right I mean like I said I but I the only thing I'm just not a son because I'm I can't depend on me and my business because I, I, it's open every day. I got to spend his lights. I mean, it's costing every day. Well, so I can't depend on this guy. He, he want to just turn around and sell it tomorrow. I didn't did all this fight for now. I, I mean, only way I would know this business would work, it got to open. It got to, it got to try to see. I mean, in order, that's the only way we'll really know. I mean, nobody might don't come. I mean, it's been plenty of business over there. You see it all vacant. It's been restaurants over there. It's not working, but I'm finna just try my luck. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it may not. It may be ten cars there every night. Then that's more than enough parking for ten cars. Trying to keep you from hurting yourself. But I, I, let me take. Can I take it? Can Can y'all approve and let me take it? I mean, I, I'm the one spending the money and taking it. Can I take that problem? Let me. Can let let me let me do it. Okay. Um. Any other question? Anyone, anyone in the audience care to address this item? Okay, we discussed it. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. I so move. You make a motion to approve. Uh huh. And in place of amusement and assembly, outdoor, no outdoor, uh, no everything on the inside. Sufficient lighting. Miss Brown, can you talk closer in the microphone? Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. All right. I don't know. Everything is on the inside. Sufficient lighting. A letter is brought in to Miss Ingram uh, when he gets it signed by his the person on the property next door, according to them allowing him to park there. Um, no parking on the service road. I think that's the last thing you said. I think so. Okay. All, all assembly inside the building. I said that. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Do I, can we make another motion or we have to vote on this one? First? We have to vote on this one. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion as presented, please raise your hand. One, two, three. All opposed? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make another motion. Motion fails. All in favor of the motion, all in favor of the motion by Ms. Brown, raise your hand. Three. You got to have five for approval of motion. Mr. Chairman, can I make a motion? You sure can. I'd like to make a motion um, that we ask the petitioner to provide us with a site plan showing the uh, the actual number of parking places on uh, his lot so that we can have more information to make an, an accurate decision. And, and, and ingress and egress. And ingress and egress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Or uh, something from the adjacent property owner which says that you've got the, the right to but, use the adjacent lot. if that goes lot. away, we still have a problem. Either one. Then you've got a problem if that goes away. If that goes away tomorrow, if he signs an agreement and then that goes away tomorrow, we got a problem if it's not enough parking. So I think right. we need to base our decision on how many parking places he has at the building. Got it. That's the motion. One question. No, oh. sir. We're in we're in discussion okay. now. Okay. Okay. Does everybody understand the motion? I have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. Motion carries. Okay. Sir, what Make sure you put down that I did not vote for that motion. All all opposed to excuse me. All opposed to the motion, raise your hand. All opposed to the motion, raise your hand. Mr. Prince, how did you vote? How did you vote on this motion? This one. On this motion. We had another motion. All in favor of the motion, raise your hand. And, it, and he's 
going to be allowed to. He's going to provide a site plan and come back to us showing how many parking places he actually has. Well, I still want him to continue. Is that all right with you, sir? What, uh, That's not his decision. The, the, the get a parking on the floor. Okay. All in favor of the motion, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. You're, you're, you're in favor? All opposed to the motion. Eight to one. Okay, here's what we decided for you to do. And this is for your benefit, I promise you. We need to see a site plan showing how many parking spaces are with that building. Okay, and how you're going to access around that building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay? All right. Well, I got one, just one, one question. All right, if we, if I had it, there'll be a Can restaurant. Can you speak a little, a little direct into that? Yes. I'm, I'm getting a bad echo. All right, if, if I had it to be a, not a place of music, if it's a restaurant, then what would we be you having? You still the have same? to have a certain amount of parking places. The city requires you to have a certain number of parking places how, depending on how big your building is. Okay, so uh, uh, like tomorrow, I get out there, I'm going to go and chalk off everything, mark off, put a car in. I mean, how many parks do I need? You, That's don't what need I'm to, you don't need to chalk it off. You need to actually hire someone to come out and do a site plan that will show us how many parking places and ingress and egress in and out of your place of business. <laughs> But what is this going? This going to keep adding on to the expense. Well, that, 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 that's if, what I'm but saying. But if you don't do that, we may not be able to vote on it. <laughs> Sir, I'm just trying we, to help you. We voted. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can get with Mr. Center tomorrow. Who? Uh, Mr. Center, Mr. James Center. Okay. okay. So that that way you go get the they site plan and but, get her the site but plan. But it's been delayed for the next meeting. Uh, okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Item number four, presented by Verona Alexander, Ms. Alexander, requesting a coverage variance for a new accessory structure to be located at 32 Fleetwood Drive in an R65 zoning district. And then um, she has asked for a side yard variance, but to be determined later and be on confirmation if we approve this, uh, if we approve this coverage variance. So, Okay, Ms. Alexander, you want to tell us what you want to do? I will. My name is Brianna Alexander. I'm at 32 Fleetwood Drive. Um, so when I got this property, there was a storage unit already on the property, and I want to place an additional storage unit. The one that is there, neither unit will be permanent. It's not, like, grounded into the ground or anything. Um, but the smaller storage unit is where my kids are playing, and I wasn't expecting them to use that um, the way they were playing in there. And I don't want to put um, the lawnmowers or anything around my kids just for safety concerns. So I will use the larger storage unit to store our extra stuff in, lawnmowers and stuff like that. Okay. So you're going to use it for a storage building. Right. You're not going to have a hobby in there. No. <laughs> you're not going to have a restroom in there. No. It's just electricity, correct? Right. Okay. All right, any questions, board members? Yes, are you going to keep the old building too? I would like to because my kids play in there, but if it needs to be removed, I can remove it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I guess you're off that property line, what, Tanya? At least 10 feet? Is that a setback 10 feet? The real property line? No, on the side. On the side, that's where, that's the amendment I gave you. She's coming in. An R65 is a 10 foot setback? Yes. Okay. Be sure that you're setting your building off the side property line at least 10 feet. Okay. Wait a minute. What? I was, I was asking what the side setback is she, with the new building. Be, she's supposed to be five feet. Five feet? With that amended write up that I gave you, she's coming a foot and a half. Gotcha. And we'll put it on I'm confirmation. sorry. You're right. You're, right. Yeah. you're <laughs> coming back for a variance. Next We're just going to put it on confirmation. confirmation. Yeah. Board, what are you saying? Board, uh, this is a, a see this uh, thing that Tanya <laughs> distributed? If we approve this uh, variance for coverage, then she, we're going to have on the, uh, uh, the next agenda for confirmation uh, a request a three foot six inch side yard, which means you will be. Uh, one foot and six inches off of that property line. Correct. Do you? Okay. Why does she? I'm just curious. Why does she, why, why does she even? Why, need, why can't she do fine? Do she doesn't have to come back. We didn't advertise it. Uh, 
that. We have to legally advertise it. Oh, she asked this later. This was afterwards. Okay. So instead of us dealing with the request 59 square feet covered, yes. we are dealing with three feet, six inch side next, yard barrier. Next month. Next it, month. It, that wasn't advertised. Okay. Okay. Any questions, board members? Anyone that ought to scare to address this item? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve as requested. Have a motion to approve. Have second. A second. Second. Mr. Johnson. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. Did Ms. Brown vote for that? Ms. Brown, did you vote? Uh -huh. I, I can't see. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Right. Everybody, everybody in favor of that motion, please raise your hand again. Tanya, get song to me if I don't get this right. <laughs> okay. It's unanimous. Okay. Item number five is presented by Robbie Mangum. Re requesting a special exception for a second kitchen in the dwelling to be located at 6501 Cathmore Drive in an Ag 1 zoning district. Mr. Mangum? Yes, Robbie Mangum, 6501 uh, Catmore Drive. Uh, in the process of building a home, gonna have a second kitchen in it. It's gonna be for uh, residential uh, existence only. All right, so the home's already there. No, it's not. You, uh, you can pull it up, it's property. And uh, we're in the process, we have plans for it now and just need a variance for the uh, second kitchen to be approved. So the house is not already there? No, it's not a house. So you're going you're to build a house? Build a house. Okay. And it's going to have a uh, second kitchen in it. And uh, when I submitted my plans, they said that we needed to get a variance in order to have that second kitchen in it and to also state that it's only going to be used for residential. Okay. All right. Um, the, if we approve this, uh, you will be, it will be stipulated that you cannot use uh, your property, your house, uh, as a separate living unit. It had to be one livable unit, okay? Yes, sir. You cannot rent that area over to the right side where you call in at an office. Yes, sir. It's, it's for your own personal use. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, there's been some concern about that, and this happens often where when somebody wants a second bathroom or kitchen, excuse me, a kitchen, then um, the neighbors begin to think, well, you're trying to have a duplex. Gotcha. You know? So are you in agreement with that? I'm in agreement. So I'm, I don't know if you have to see the plans of the house or not, but... You're in agreement? It will, I'm in agreement, yeah. It will only, only be used as a single family, one, one family residence. Exactly. If you, can, if you can build this house, I don't think you need to rent money for the other <laughs> Right, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And, and then you're going to have an office over here on the end, so that's your own personal office. Own personal So office. you cannot rent that office. Exactly, right. And as long as we don't have an understanding of that. So, Tanya, you got, got that in the records? Okay. Now, as it being out, it'll be a personal office. You will not conduct business out of it. No, or, right. you won't, you won't have any. Use. Just personal business. You won't yes. have any. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Tanya, did we cover that? Yes, sir. Okay. As long as you understand, it's for your own personal use only, or whoever owns the house is for their personal use personal only. Personal use only. Yes. Not no rentals. No other. Uh, related activity except residential use and you're going to use that office for your own personal need yes okay any questions anyone in the audience care to address, address this item entertain a motion and, did somebody raise their hand i'll entertain a motion Ms. i move Brown? i move that we uh she she asked okay oh, go ahead do you want to go he ain't done nothing I don't care. Night. Let him do something. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we uh, grant Mr. Mangum's request as long as uh, it's used for personal use only. Okay. That was second. That was second. Mr. Mr. Williams seconds. Is there any further discussion? All in favor of the motion as presented, please raise your hand. Good luck. Thank you. Unanimous. When do you plan on starting? December the 2nd. Okay, good. That's, that's, it's going to be nice. Yeah, appreciate How it. How many square feet? Uh, it's, 
Yeah, I just want to come to the movie room. Yeah. All right, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Item number six, presented by Mid State Signs, representing Jim Massey, requests an exception to Smart Co. for internal lighting for new signage to be located on the property at 505 East South Boulevard. Excuse me, East South Street in a T4R zoning district. Good afternoon, Judy Moore. Thank you. Um, Jim Massey. We're asking. Um, permission to install a digital message center at 505 East South Street on an existing um, ID sign. Okay, it's going to be double sided. Yes. Internal and in LED. Yes. Right? Is it going to be blinking? It's. I just. It is one of those digital. I know it'll change. It'll rotate. Right, right? it changes. But not. Right. Flashing. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> pulsating not or whatever. That. It's not that kind of blink blink. No, Good. No pulsating. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. I have seen those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Any questions, board members? Nope. Anyone in the audience care to address this item? Did we lose Mr. Prince? He went to the restroom. Oh. Entertain a motion. Anyone else care, anyone care to address this item? I'll entertain a motion. So be it. Have a motion from Ms. Brown to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second. From Pickett, Mr. Reese. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Eight to zero. Thank you. Okay, good Thank luck. You. Thank you. Item seven is presented by Tiffany Robles, requesting a special exception to keep chickens on the property located at 826 Greg Drive in an R75S zoning district. Yes, ma'am. Um, Tiffany Robles, 826 Greg Drive. Um, I'm just trying to request for a special exception to house four hens um, in a backyard coop on my yard, in my backyard. So your exception to keep them, so you've had them? No. I want to, I wanted to get permission first. Okay. Good for you. Well, it says to keep, so we assume, I assume that they were already there, but you oh, don't no, have them. They're not there. Okay. I just have dogs in my backyard. Okay. May uh, I say? Yes, ma'am. I love the way you presented it okay. as I read it for the chickens and how you were going to keep them. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's a pretty fancy uh, uh, chicken house. <laughs> I, 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 I took a few days to design Is it. Is it air conditioned? <laughs> I want to make sure they have a good place. Uh, okay, uh, Ms. Robles, uh, you want to have up to four chickens? Yes, sir. No roosters? No roosters. Okay. No babies. And you're going to keep them confined in this uh, pen? Yes, sir. And right? The chicken run could, I mean, if you, you need it to, it could be bigger if you feel like they need more space. I have. Room are they, to make. Are they go, they're going to be confined to this coop? They would be confined to the they're coop. They're not going to be roaming your yard. No, no, oh, that would be bad. We, I have dogs and cats, so they are not free roaming at all. They will. I'm I'm making sure that the coop will be, you know, animal resistant, so that there's no chance that my dog can get in or the cats could get in, because there's a lot of neighborhood cats, and um, I don't want the, you know, I don't want any danger to happen. Like I would feel horrible if I acquired a pet and then it got injured because I didn't build the right place for it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any questions, board members? I think we have someone here that would like to speak to this item. Y'all got any questions? Anyone in the audience care to address this item? Y'all can take your pick. You can come up and speak. Yes, ma'am. Speak. Speak. Please speak uh, loud and clear. Hello, my name is Kathy Berriman. Uh, my property is 881 Greg Drive, which is just down the road from her property. Uh, we back up to the drainage ditch, and my next door neighbors have two young children that play in the backyard, and I have witnessed a coyote in the drainage ditch, which runs behind my property, which is right across the street from her property and they are a animal of whatever they want to get 
when they want to get it. And I am very concerned about having chickens, even if they're in a coop, the coyote is going to come and they are going to get whatever they can get. And I have a little bit of an issue about that in the neighborhood, especially with having two young children right next door to my property at 881 Greg Drive. Um, I live in Vaughn Meadows, and my property backs up to a drainage ditch. And we have had coyotes in our neighborhood, and we have had cats that have been killed. My next door neighbor's cat was killed. And I witnessed a coyote in that drainage ditch in the middle of the day, broad daylight. And I really don't think that we need to have chickens, even if they're in a coop, that animal is going to try to get what it can get. And I really think that is a detriment to our neighborhood. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Could I ask you uh, Ms. Bar uh, Ms. Berryman, is that right? Is that your last name? Ms. Kathy Ms. Brown. K A T H Y. Last name is Barrowman. B A R R O W M A N. Barrowman. Barrowman. Okay. Ms. Brown has a question for you. For the address. I'm sorry. Address. My address is 881 Greg Drive. And you're across the street from her? I am. I think I'm down about five houses on the left but my property backs up to the drainage ditch that runs from Harrison Road all the way down and to the VA. And if you come down to Quesney, Duquesne, you come across the drainage ditch. And my daughter lives in that property at 881 Greg. I own it. And I witnessed a coyote in that drainage ditch in the middle of the day. So I'm just very concerned about having chickens in a property where a coyote is going to try to get them and even if they're in a coop he's going to try to get them whether they have a dog or not because i have witnessed it on my own eyes it was walking right down the drainage ditch broad daylight middle of the day so and my next door neighbor has two young little girls that play in their backyard that backs up to the drainage ditch so i'm just telling you um they're everywhere and to have chickens, even in a coop, could be a detriment to the neighborhood. And you could have some serious injuries. And my daughter walks her dogs at night. And coyotes are out at night also. So I'm just, I just have a concern for that. Thank you, ma'am. Any more questions? Sir? Anybody? I, I think that'll do it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Reeves. Cruz Reeves. President of Midtown Montgomery Neighborhood Alliance, and I live in Forest Hills. And this morning I walked that street in, in that whole block, and I didn't find anybody that knew about this. And I think the petitioner should have at least contacted their neighbors. Everybody I talked to, none of them knew about it. And. Uh, I want it rejected, but at the very least, I'd like it postponed another month. Let her talk to the neighbors. We just don't want any chickens over there. We don't want the smell or the noise either. Okay, thank you. Cruz, do you know how many um, other families in that neighborhood have chickens? Mr. Reeves? You don't know anybody in Forest Hills that's got chickens? interesting. What do you say? He doesn't know anybody. He doesn't, doesn't know anybody. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ms. Robles, uh, would you like to respond to their concerns and yes, then sir. we'll make a decision? Yes, sir. Um, regarding the coyote, I am well aware. I used to live a, a street down and that house backed up against the drainage ditch. Um, and I did lose a cat to it, um, but the cat was not on my property at the time. It was wandering around and that's why it got um, hit and my neighborhood on that street on Greg there are a ton of cats that just wander if anything they would also be an attractant so the hens wouldn't be any more so when there's only like so few and the regulations for keeping the odor down and managing the manure it, it shouldn't attract them any more than the neighborhood cats already would be and I'm not anywhere near the drainage ditch and I have 
like almost all the yards that I butt up against have big dogs in them. There's no way that I could foresee a coyote wanting to go through that many dogs to get to a bird when there's free cats like all over and tons of cats live in the drainage ditch. There's rabbits that live in the drainage ditch from somebody who released them a while back. So I don't see the, a couple birds having any additional concerns regarding what already is existing in that neighborhood as wildlife that the coyotes could get to. And I've seen it one time four years ago when I lived at the other house. And I've never seen it since. I walk my dogs at night. Um, I have cats that are indoor outdoor cats and I've never had any issues since that one time. Um, regarding the, the talking to my neighbors, I talked to my neighbor directly north of me, the one that you can see the house in the uh, picture. Um, he has the pool. He didn't care at all, but he was, you know, I, he, was, he would have to see it and, and potentially, you know, hear or look at the birds. So that's why I spoke to him. I tried to get a hold of the neighbor to the south of me, but our schedules don't line up. And then again, the sign has been in the yard for weeks, well, not weeks, but a week at least, that the city put in to announce the whole thing. Um, I've never really had neighbors. I've been there for a couple of years. I've never had anybody really come up to talk to me that much, like friendly wise. So, um, and people across the street, I mean, they shouldn't even be aware that they exist because of where I plan on putting the coop. They would never see or hear them or smell them. So I didn't just think about talking to anybody across the street. Um, but I did try to, I did talk to my northern neighbor and I tried to talk to my southern neighbor and I just, I couldn't get to him. And I didn't talk to anybody on the, the backyards that touch mine because I, I just don't know how they line up that great so I didn't go to the other side. Um, but that would be the only thing okay. I have on that. Thank you. Tanya. Any other questions? Tanya, was this advertised properly? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? And we're not required to have neighbors confirm whether they saw it or not or anything no, like we, that? No, we, we do legal ads in the paper. We post it on our website. We put a public hearing sign a week right. prior to the meeting. May I say that I did see it? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, ma'am. Um, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Mr. Hughes? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All opposed? Prince, what'd you do? We voted for it. What was it, 8-1? Yes, sir. Okay. You approve. Thank you. Item number eight is presented by Charles Carmichael, requesting a side yard variance for an addition to, be, to the dwelling located at 4450 Woodcrest Drive and R60S zoning. Mr. Carmichael? Yeah, Charles Carmichael. Hello, how you doing today? Woodcrest Drive. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to, uh, to build a garage, a single car garage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you want to be, you want to come to nine feet with the, from the side property line, that means you got one foot. Yes, sir. And mm -hmm. uh, like we always do, you got to commit that you're going to keep your water on your property. I will, I will have gullet. Go you have gutters and downspouts, right? Gutters. That's right. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions, board members? Anyone in the audience care to address this item? Entertain a motion. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we grant the request for nine feet side yard there. Okay. It's only that one little corner of your building that's affected by this. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? I need a second. Ma'am? I need a second. Second. I'm sorry. Who, <laughs> who did? Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson? Gotcha. Who made it? All right. We got a motion to approve Mr. Johnson. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Raise your hand. It's unanimous. Okay. All right. Good luck on building that. Uh, thank you. All right. Item number 10, present, nine, presented by Larry Speaks, representing Wendy's. Requesting exceptions for smart code for a new building to be located at 625 Madison Avenue in a T440 smart code zoning district. 
Yes, I'm Paul McClendon with Larry Speaks and Associates, and on behalf of RNL Foods, we are seeking numerous exceptions to the Smart Code T40 uh, for the Wendy's restaurant uh, located on Madison Avenue at 625 Madison Avenue. So let, let me, excuse me, let me ask you, y'all are going to demolish the existing structure? That is correct. And build a new structure? That's right. You, you may have noticed some of the other Wendy's around. If, you, if you've driven by, they're kind of changing the, the brand look of their buildings. They have the big red blade now and, and more windows. Um, and that's what they're trying to do at this location as well. So, yeah, they, they will demolish it's the, the existing corner of Madison and Union. Mm -hmm. It's right next door to Burger King. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, board members, y'all, why don't y'all look at these... Uh, seven points here to see if you have any question no question uh, let's see um you'll maintain and reface the existing pylon is that the pylon on madison uh i believe that is correct yes okay are you going to change the parking any the only changes to parking uh, on the entry side, which is on the east side of the building, we are tearing some parking out and, and basically just regrading it for ADA compliance on that side. Uh, we're also removing a, a few parking spaces in order to add landscape islands uh, in order to try to help with the, the lot coverage. We, we, we try to so help you're not you're lot. not reducing this number of parking spaces. We are re we are removing some spaces. Yes. You are removing some. Yes. Okay. How many do you know? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I may have it here, actually. But you'll still be within the required number. Yes. We are removing seven yeah. spaces total. Okay. You, but you're, you're leaving the curb cuts where they are. You're not changing curb cuts. That's correct. Okay. All right. Any questions, board members? Uh, I guess the dual drive through that y'all are trying to help That's with traffic flow and keep them off the street. That's correct. Yeah, the, the basically the existing drive through will stay roughly where it is and the, the uh, the new drive through will extend around beyond the, to, to the north of it. Mr. Howell, you got a question? Yes. You're going to, you're going to maintain the existing footprint. I mean, the footprint of the existing building, more or less, right? The new building is actually slightly smaller, but it will be on the same basic building pad in the same okay. spot. And this will make this Wendy's look like all the other new looking Wendy's I've seen in other places. That's correct. Yeah, I've got, um, I have a rendering, not of this building, but of a, of a similar building that shows the, the external finishes and everything. Uh, okay. You'd like to see it. I'm familiar uh, with it. That'll be an improvement. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Anyone in the audience care to address this item? If not, Mr. Howell, you want to make a motion? Motion to approve as presented. A motion to approve. Have a second. Second. Mr. Pickett Reese. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. <coughs> Eight zero. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. We have a motion to approve our minutes. So moved. Have a motion to approve. Have a second. Have a motion to adjourn. So moved.